Hey guys, so welcome to this instructional video on how to use the JPS 12 week arm specialization training program. So I'm just gonna run you through the program itself and the uh, different tabs that are contained within the Excel sheet that you have at your disposal. So in the program information tab, you'll see some general info. You can put your name, age, your starting weight, your dieting phase, any deadlines or potential competitions you might have, and any other information relevant to your training, uh, such as focus points uh, that you wanna be working on, uh, whether it's your sleep, whether you have any health complications, things like that. And in terms of the training overview, this program's designed for five sessions per week. However, you can opt to do only four sessions, uh, excluding one of the lower body days, if you can get to the gym four times per week. But otherwise, I recommend uh, trying to get all five in and the deload guidelines are six to one. So we have six overloading weeks and one uh, down week where we drop volume and intensity to uh, recover or dissipate all the fatigue accumulated from your hard overloading weeks. You can put in there your training age, any injuries uh, you currently have, hopefully none in the upper body because this program will challenge your upper extremities quite a lot. So if you do have any shoulder, elbow, or uh, wrist injuries, I recommend that you put off undergoing this program and it's probably a wise idea to delay uh, partaking in this program because it will put a serious amount of strain on uh, the joints uh, in the upper body. So any previous injuries you might have and any comments, again, related more specifically to your training in this one, you have your program key uh, with some very basic stuff uh, outlining what supinated, pronated grip is, uh, what BB, uh, DB, KB, and SB uh, mean on your program, as well as my rep. So there's an instructional video uh, that you can watch here, and that's with uh, Steve Hall as he demonstrates how to perform my reps. There's a slight uh, variation of the my reps. Uh, he has a shorter rest uh, in this video and performs three or more reps, whereas uh, we're having a little bit longer rest and we're gonna try to perform as many reps as we can for the appropriate repetitions in reserve targets for that particular exercise. As you can see here, your intensity regulator, RIR, repetitions in reserve, uh, is outlined. So an RIR of zero means that you hit failure, could not do any more reps. RIR of zero to one, possibly one more rep. And RIR of one, could definitely do one more rep. RIR of one to two, could definitely do one more rep, possibly two. RIR of two, means you could definitely do two more reps, so on and so forth. Uh, there's a video there for you to watch as well. And also included is a demonstration manual that I put together a while back, uh, just with some key tips for the big movements uh, within this program. And if you head over to the JPS YouTube channel, uh, you'll find a lot more uh, videos uh, on how to perform a lot of the exercises contained within this program. So if we head over to phase one, and we go right to uh, week one, you'll see here that for day one, you have exercises and there's a drop down menu where you can select an exercise of your choice for the muscle group prescribed here. You also have a tempo prescribed uh, for that exercise as well as the sets, the rep range that you're going to be used and your target repetitions in reserve. Obviously I'm not prescribing load for you. We're not using a percentage based program here. We're gonna be using repetitions in reserve to guide our load selection. And this green section here is your prescribed sets, reps, and RIR, and you plug in the load. Now, in each session for each exercise, you are gonna record the load, the reps, and the RIR that you use for all of these sets. Now, when, when you plug this in, for example, let's say we choose the inclined barbell press with 80 kgs, and we get eight reps for an RIR of four on set one, you'll see over here in your metrics, the volume load, the estimated one RM, the number of hypertrophic reps that you got for that particular set, and the hypertrophic volume load for that set. Now, we're not just gonna leave it at one set because we have three sets prescribed. We're gonna plug in the following set, and let's say for your second set, we're gonna use the same load, and let's say we get nine reps because we found our groove in that set and we still hit the RIR of four, your metrics for volume load, estimated one RM, hypertrophic reps, hypertrophic volume load, are going to add up both sets and give you the number of volume load, estimated one RM based on both sets, your hypertrophic reps, as well as your hypertrophic volume load for those two sets. 
Now we continue this process, 80 kilos, we've got nine reps again for an RIR of four, and it adds up all of those figures. And we repeat this process for all of our exercises. Now your goal in the following week is to use the dynamic double progression. So that is, we are going to try to add reps first before we add load. So we're gonna try and increase our reps until we hit all sets at the top end rep range for the appropriate RIR before we add weight and start back at the bottom. Now you don't have to add just one rep per week. You can increase load from set to set provided you stay within that range and you're meeting the RIR. But I do recommend trying to add reps until you get to the top end of the rep range for all sets before you add weight. So the following week on the incline barbell press, we might go to 85 kilos. We might be able to get eight reps for an RIR of three. And the next set, we might go 87.5, it felt pretty good. We might get eight reps again for an RIR of three and 87.5 again for eight for an RIR of three. And you can see here that we got eight hypertrophic reps as opposed to five hypertrophic reps in the previous week. And we're using a significantly larger volume load. Now you can repeat this process and assess from week to week. And your objective is to see primarily, uh, especially for your isolation exercises, the number of hypertrophic reps that you get and hypertrophic volume load increasing from week to week for each exercise. And that will be a very good proxy that you're building muscle. So you repeat this process all the way through phase one until we reach week six. And then we're gonna move into phase two and week one of phase two is a deload. Now there's only very minor adjustments in phase two of this program. We're simply going to be altering the order of exercise. So you'll see now here that uh, your back exercise is first in this workout and that the uh, bench press option targeting the chest is now second in the workout. And you'll also notice your repetition ranges are higher. So instead of five to 10, we have eight to 12, and this is increasing across all of your exercises. So this phase takes a week or two to really kick off until uh, volume gets jacked right up again. And it, as always, we increase our hypertrophic reps and volume load across the weeks. So that is the goal. And you'll also measure your soreness. So coming back to week one, Hopefully soreness in that first session is gonna be pretty high. You might be rating your soreness as uh, you know three out of three. You're really sore from week six. Now hopefully over the course of this week, your soreness drops down and you're back to about a one out of three by week two. If not, you might need to uh, reduce the volume on this first and second session uh, by one set on, on all exercises uh, until you get that, vo that soreness down to at least a one, uh, hopefully a zero. And then you're ready to kick off the rest of the program. Now, in relation to how we go about the rest of the sessions, very much the same process. You're gonna notice, however, that for some of your exercises, you have an activation set and myo reps. So to explain this a little bit further, to make sure that you're fully understanding what's required, we'll go to day four of phase one, you're simply gonna perform an activation set. So that one, that one set is your activation set, and then you do two Maya rep sets. So you perform a set of, uh, let's say, for the hamstrings, uh, no, screw it, we'll go to day five because this is an arm specialization program. We'll go to the biceps, we'll pick the preacher curl. And our activation set, let's say that we use, uh, you know, 20 kgs on the preacher curl, and we get uh, 20 reps, an hour out of two. Now we're gonna try and keep an hour out of two, but we're gonna rest 10 to 20 seconds. So we're gonna have a really short rest after this activation set and perform as many reps as we can. So after this activation set, you're gonna rest 10 to 20 seconds. We'll use the same load. And let's say we get 10 reps because we're still really fatigued. And that's an RIR of two. That is your first my rep set. So you've done one of those two my rep sets. Now we're gonna rest another 10 to 20 seconds. We're gonna use the same load. So it's kind of like a drop set, but we're not reducing the load. And we're gonna perform as many reps as we can. We might get six here for an RAR of two again. So that's gonna to come to a total of almost 11 hypertrophic reps. And that's gonna be achieved in a very short amount of time. And that, that's the beauty of the my rep scheme. 
And we're gonna use that uh, for a number of exercises within this program to not only achieve a, a great uh, training stimulus and get some serious tension on the muscles, but do so in a really time efficient manner. Now, that is the Myo Reps Explained. I'll just get rid of all that there. And you'll notice in phase two, you don't have any Myo Reps on week one, and that's because you're taking a deload, and we just wanna give you not just a physical uh, reduction in training stress, but also the psychological stress that comes with performing my reps because they're quite brutal and mentally demanding, but then we'll kick them off again in week two of the program. Included in the template is also a diet tracker. This is a bit of a bonus. We give you some really rough guidelines in the uh, manual, the how-to manual that we provide you, but what we recommend you do here is work out calories, macros, you can use calculators, formulas. We've put out a bunch of information in the past uh, to do that, but generally just aiming for around 1.6 to 2.2 grams of protein per kg and not having too little fat or carbs and eating appropriate amount of calories. You've got low days there and a high day setup. So if you want to have undulating calorie intakes within the week, you can do that. If you're in a calorie surplus, you probably don't need to do this. Uh, you might prefer this kind of method, having high days, on training days and lower days on your rest days. And then you can simply put in a step target, how many meals you're gonna have, how much protein you're gonna have in each meal. There's some videos here for you on what calories and macros are, how to weigh and measure your food portions, how to set up MyFitnessPal, how to track calories on MyFitnessPal, and some myths around fat loss and spot reduction. But you plug in your body weight and the weight tracker here will automatically update your weight in this tab here over the course of the weeks and determine whether or not you're gaining or losing weight. If you're trying to gain weight, I recommend you try to gain around 0.25 to 0.5% of your body weight per week over the course of this 12-week program, and that should see you gain a pretty decent amount of muscle for each day here in week one. Plug in your body weight, your calories, your protein, carb, fat, and your fiber intake, your water, whether or not you train, how many steps you got if you're gonna track steps, your sleep, energy, mood, and hunger. You repeat this process for all the days in the week. If you're someone who's super analytical, loves numbers, this will work great for you. And if you're somebody who just wants to track the bare minimum, I suggest you track your weight at least two to three times a week. Pick the days you're gonna weigh yourself. You know, Set up a meal plan that helps you meet your calories and your macros and just follow the plan and then plug in the numbers if you meet the plan for the averages at the bottom here over the week. And then over the course of all of the weeks, you can repeat this process. So guys, I hope this video helped explain uh, how to use the JPS 12-week arm specialization training program. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at jacob at jpshealthandfitness.com.au and may the gains be with you.